let me, this is, oh, this is a word. Okay. A lot of times when I'm coaching clients, they feel like, oh, if I can't see the whole staircase, if I can't see steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, then I can't take step one. You feel like because you can't see every single step and you don't know what to expect that you can't take the first step. You can't let it be messy. You can't be a beginner. This astrology is asking you, are you going to go after your dreams or you're going to keep being like, poor me. I don't know what I'm doing. Poor me. Everybody else is winning except me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's astrology forecast or report, whatever I'm going to call it. I don't know. If you are listening to this, watching this, and friend, you made it through the initial moment of eclipse on last week. If you're listening to this in real time, very early Thursday morning, late Wednesday night, depending on where you are in the world, there was a solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. A solar eclipse, it's like a super new moon, if you will. And new moons are new beginnings. It is a time for things to come officially to an end and for a new beginning to emerge. And for this particular eclipse season, it tugged on you and your identity. Identity is who am I? Who do I believe myself to be? And thus, how do I show up into the world? And so this eclipse energy came in like we knocking, we bucking, and we ready to fight, okay? Meaning that you've been hearing the whispers for a good solid month and they would have got louder and louder and louder till they were yelling at you and you probably still hear the yelling that you need to go do a thing, that you need to stop wasting time, that you need to get out of your feelings, that you need to stop with the excuses. And it may have also come with a lot of fear, a lot of, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if people get it. There's nobody who supports me. And y'all, this eclipse energy don't give a F about none of that. Try not to cuss because we are on the YouTubes, okay? But they don't, it don't care. It don't care um, if you scare. It don't care if you feel like you don't know enough. It does not care if you feel like you don't have all the skills you need because this eclipse energy came through like it is just time to go and this is further going to be supported if you will by the transits of this week so i am i'm not going to talk to you about what all the moons and the planets are doing i'm just going to highlight a few things because i'm trying to make this more uh, relatable to y'all more than it is getting into the astrology jargon now i am going to use some astrology jargon and it's only for the people who like to follow along to know what i'm talking about so they can do that but for the rest of you don't worry about it just listen to the message okay i kicked off with the eclipse even though it's not this week because i needed you to know what was driving the energy as we come into one of the last weeks of April. So the first thing I want to talk about is on Monday evening, the moon is going to go into Cancer. Now the Mars has been sitting in Cancer. Mars does not like being into Cancer. Now, what does this mean for you? The moon represents our emotions. It represents our body, right? And the moon is going home. The moon's home is in Cancer. It's like, girl, this is where I get my good sleep. This is where my good clothes are. This is where I get to have all the food I love. That's how Mars feels about cancer. Mars, um, excuse me, the moon feels about cancer. Mars, on the other hand, is like, I hate it here. I hate it here. This is the aunt who don't got cable. She ain't got no internet. She always be trying to make me eat those frozen pie pies. I don't like it here, but I got to be here for another month. That's how Mars is. It's real irritated. It's been here for a couple of weeks. They don't like it. And here come the moon, all happy and cheery and shit. Like I'm at home. What does this mean for you? That's how you probably are feeling on the inside. You probably feel like there is some sort of, um, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's your job, maybe it's something you've been working towards and you've been questioning, should you let it go? You real irritated, you feel like you've been working and hustling and you've been trying everything in your power and it doesn't seem like anything is moving the needle. And it seems like you're surrounded by people who they just out here winning. Everything is just seems like it's coming easy to them. They just don't have no worries and no cares. And that's causing you to be a little bit frustrated and you're about to cuss some people out. 
But I, what I'm going to encourage you to do is keep it cute. Okay. Keep it cute. And you're going to feel this energy Monday night, Tuesday. It's, and instead of cussing people out, I'm going to invite you to go journal, go take a walk, go do something, do something active. Mars likes to be active. And especially when it's like activated, when you like all in your feelings, go do something active. And I'm not saying don't do not cuss those people out. Don't do that. I don't know who those people are for you, but do not cuss them out. Okay. Because this energy is going to pass. The moon moves really quickly. It's not going to stay there that long. So I just need you to keep it cute. Okay. So also on Tuesday, the moon is going to sextile Mercury, which is in retrograde y'all. We all, we in a whole ass Mercury retrograde. I cut. Hopefully YouTube don't flag me. But Mercury started retrograding last Friday. And this particular retrograde season is happening in Taurus. And Taurus likes to keep it cute and move slow. And so this Mercury retrograde is inviting you to reflect on what brings you pleasure, friend? Taurus loves a good pleasure, pleasurable experience. It loves good food, good company, good oils, fine dining, fine experiences, all the good oils. That's the Taurus energy. And because Mercury is hanging out there, it's going to be there for a minute. It's asking you to slow down in the middle of spring, slow your ass down and ask yourself, what brings you joy? What brings you pleasure? Now, Mercury is all about communication, relationships, like our friendships, travel. I, I call Mercury like, you're a little messy friend. You know, everybody business. <laughs> you over here gossiping. But Mercury just likes to talk for the sake of talking. So that is why when we have a Mercury retrograde communication, it ain't cute. Travel, there's a delay. Technology, there's a glitch. Because Mercury has slowed down. It's not moving at its normal speed. It's It's being put on timeout and it's resting. And you know what happens when you rest for a little bit too long and you got nothing but but, but time to think. You start reevaluating. You start putting two to two together. You like, wait a minute. When they said that the other the day what was they really trying to say that's how i want you to think about mercury retrograde because when you can take that energy and you can combine it with the energy of the moon who is like i'm just living life i'm at home but i got to deal with this negative nancy over here mars who got irritation when you put all those things together here's what it might look like this week you might be sitting minding your business scrolling watching love is blind the reunion which was awful by the way and then you might be like two to two two plus two equals four but the math ain't math and that person said this the other day wait a minute I think they got me fucked up because they got me fucked up I need to go tell them about themselves let me go tell them about this about themselves in all the ways they got me fucked up and I'm gonna just read a list off to them and if we gotta fight we gotta fight now that's how you might be feeling on the inside what I'm encouraging you to do is just take a note of that Mercury is doing its job let's just take a note let's not cuss the people out let's keep it cute and say and ask instead rather what is this trying to teach me? Because I made this connection. What is it trying to teach me? What is it trying to show me? Instead of going to cuss that person out or getting irritated at those people over there or going down a victim shame spiral mess of like, it's not fair. Things always happen to me. Instead of doing that, how can you be responsible for your own joy, your own pleasure? How can you be responsible for you going after your own goals? Tuesday and Wednesday, friend, the middle of this week, that's your assignment. What brings you joy? What brings you pleasure? Do not get distracted by other people and you want to go project onto them and cuss them out. I don't care if you got all the receipts, leave them people alone. Your assignment is what brings you joy and pleasure. Because when we roll into Thursday and the moon is rolling into Leo and it's a first quarter moon, the first quarter moon just means it's time to put into action the new moon is like here's your new beginning let's let's give you a week to think about it get accustomed to it think through reevaluate and then when the first quarter moon which is about a week later the moon goes through phases that's a different video but at a first quarter moon is asking you okay you evaluate it you know what brings you pleasure and joy. You know what you need to do. Let's go do it. Now, Leo is the, is represented by the sun. It's like I shine, I drip every day because I just woke up, okay? And everybody should just thank me for my presence alone, all right? I'm going to kill it. I'm going to do a thing. But you should just thank me because I showed up. That's the energy that you want to have as we roll into the end of this week. You did not cuss that person out. You're not thinking about those people over there. You thought about what your pleasure needs. You thought about what you want to do. Now it's like, let's go do it. And you got the energy of Leo behind you. You got the energy of the sun behind you. Go take action. But here's what I want to caution you of. On Saturday, the moon 
it's going to roll into Virgo. Now, Virgo, where Leo is like, let's do it. I'm here. Virgo is like, I got the plan. I got the plan to keep this ball rolling because you do too much sometimes, Leo. You'd be having these big ideas, but you don't have no plan to get it done. Virgo is like, I got a plan for you. Let me, this is, oh, this is a word. Okay. A lot of times when I'm coaching clients, they feel like, oh, if I can't see the whole staircase, if I can't see steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, then I can't take step one. You feel like because you can't see every single step and you don't know what to expect that you can't take the first step. You can't let it be messy. You can't be a beginner. But here's what we all know to be true, whether we want to admit it or not. No one knows how things are going to go. You don't know how you're going to achieve the goal until you achieve the goal. And then you can look back and tell people how you did it. But you do not know. You would have not been able to account for every mishap, every thing that went left or what was going to happen when you took step three. You didn't know. And we don't know until we start taking the first steps and we learn what's waiting for us at the next step. This first quarter moon is like this. This is the first step. Take the first step. And then you can trust that Virgo is going to have you over the weekend and it's going to fill in the rest of it for you. But if you don't take that first step, Virgo is just going to get caught up in perfectionism. It's going to get caught up in all the details. It's going to miss the forest for the trees. I hope y'all are still rocking with me and what I mean here. You were, you receive an assignment and during this eclipse. This assignment is not something new. It's not something you're confused about. You hear it. Now, whether you're ignoring it is a whole nother theme but essentially this astrology for the week is like what are you gonna do are you gonna take action or are you gonna still sit there on the sideline eating popcorn and talking shit about everybody else this astrology is asking you are you going to go after your dreams or you're gonna keep being like poor me I don't know what I'm doing. Poor me. Everybody else is winning except me. Are you going to accept responsibility for you, your pleasure, what you need, your goals? And are you going to take the messy action, the courageous action, the bold action to get everything that is yours and more? The astrology is asking you to not get caught up in your temporary emotions of being irritated with people or being like, let me read you. Don't do that. Save your good energy and time to go after your goals and your dreams and go after your pleasure. Taurus is about pleasure. Now, this is why a Mercury retrograde lasts for as long as it does. And this is why eclipse seasons are six months because we need time to fully grow into this new identity. We need time to really start taking the messy action and seeing what is waiting for us. But that does not give you an excuse to keep procrastinating. You don't have time to procrastinate. You do have time to take messy action. Now, I would love to know that is all that I have for this week. I want to know what your thoughts are down below. If you're listening to this on the podcast, come on over to YouTube and let me know your thoughts. And I will see y'all next week. Bye for now.